Billions of bank accounts and billions of people is what Ripple and XRP are connected to. And in this video, I am going to show you how many bank accounts and how many people actually have access to use XRP. Let's get into this because this is gonna be a fantastic video. I wanted to do this for a while, so let's go ahead and get into this. So, because Citibank is ready, Ripple, Medico, and Citibank private ledgers XRPL, right? They talk about tokenizations, proof of private market concept. Check this out. Of course, Citi continues to develop digital asset solution in line with goals, governance, and risk appetite using a unified set of shared technology capabilities on a common strategic approach. These innovation solutions enhance Citi's products and services, including digital money, trade securities, custody, and asset servicing, collateral, and mobility, right? And if you take a look here, Citibank has 200 million accounts, right? 200 million customers in 160 countries and jurisdictions. Okay. Now check this out. Visa. This is some old news, but check this out. So Visa acquires Ripple Partner Currency Cloud for 925 million. Visa, the leading payment processing money company, has completed its acquisition of Currency Cloud for a whopping 700 million British pounds, about 925 million US dollars. Okay. And here's here's the post Visa and Currency Cloud. Visa also went out and acquires Ripple Partner Earthport. And in MasterCard and Visa were in a bidding war for this company. And as you can see this January, 2019. Last week, it announced that Visa plans to acquire Earthport, a cross-border automated clearinghouse for payments. The story garnered interest from the crypto world because Earthport has been a Ripple partner since 2015. One of the, one of the first high profile banks to use Ripple was Santander. And we will talk about that in just a second. But how many people, Look at this. By connecting more than 4 billion account holders in over 130 million countries is what Visa has the opportunity to do with Ripple and XRP when they so choose to. Now, let's talk about MasterCard. MasterCard partners with Ripple for CBDCs, right? How, I mean, this was this was back in 2023, August 22nd. MasterCard announced the launch of its CBDC partner program, which it aims to use as a platform to corporate with key crypto industry leaders. This announcement states facts that the first central bank, or excuse me, the facts about the central bank digital currency industry, including that 93% of central banks are engaged in some form of work on CBDCs and four retail CBDCs are already fully live and in circulation. Ripple's CBDC platforms, right? Palau, Montenegro, all of these different places. These are testing grounds, right? MasterCard, Visa, they're all looking at this. Central banks all over the world are looking at this and they're saying it is working, right? We can use that same technology to be successful, to move value at the speed of light. And that is what is exciting about all of this. And if you look at this, MasterCard has a 1.6, 1.46 billion MasterCard debit credit cards in circulation worldwide, right? Think about if MasterCard started to use XRP to move all of the, all of this value. Every time you go use your MasterCard, you pay for something. Imagine XRP moves that value instantly. That's what we're talking about here. And of course, Amex, right? My, my wallet is Visa, MasterCard, and Amex. So all of my wallet basically has connections into Ripple and to XRP. That is exciting, okay? Big day for Ripple as Amex joins RippleNet. This is back 2023. Ripple just released an announcement that American Express has joined RippleNet. Amex will be joining the ranks of many other that have done, including Credit, Arg, Argicol, Sulax, and Air Wallex Bank. Uh, RippleNet is uh, Ripple's blockchain. We already know that, right? Fast fees. But how many people, how many people have American Express cards? 133 million people have Amex cards, right? Exciting. So let's go, let's go a little bit more here. Barclays, right? Barclays in, in one of their documents that they put out, they have network, e.g. Ripple and XRP, right? That is a big deal. Barclays has hundreds of millions of users as well. And then you also have the chief executive of Barclays talking about crypto and blockchain technology. Let me play this. You know, both, I would say. We spend a lot of time working with fintechs. We allow technology startup companies and small businesses to actually connect with our with our systems and our network to see what sort of take up they may receive out in, out in the marketplace. We have partnered with a number of fintechs, but obviously they're also trying to get their little slices of the financial world. In many cases, that involves Barclays. So I think a big bank like Barclays needs to engage fintechs. In many ways, they are innovators seeking scale. We as a major bank, it's a scale player seeking innovation. So that means sometimes we'll compete and sometimes we'll partner and, and indeed invest in fintechs as we've done quite a bit over the last couple. Okay, so also HSBC, HSBC adoption of medical platform could drive interest in the XRP ledger. Supporters of Ripple's XRP ledger reportedly seek collabor collaboration 
with Ripple-owned infrastructure provider Medico and the financial institution HSBC as a sign that the banks will adopt the Ledger protocol and the XRP token, right? 42 million customers is how many HSBC has, okay? You also have Santander, which was one of the original banks to join up. Santander partners with Ripple to bring certainty and speed to international payments. You have this, this thing here. Let me play this a little My name bit. is Ed Metzger. I'm the Chief Technology Officer for OnePayFX. OnePayFX is the name that Santander's given to its new proposition for... Ah! No! I've broken it! My bad. My name is Ed Metzger. I'm the name that Santander has given to its new proposition for international payments. Banco Santander is the, the biggest bank in the, the Eurozone by market capitalization, and we have over 140 million customers around the world. The reason why we were... 140 million customers around the world, guys. Add all of this up, right? What does this mean? This means that the world is connected to Ripple and can use XRP if they so choose to. When regulation comes in globally, when CBDCs come in globally, it is going to be on. And this is why I'm so adamant about talking about XRP. I don't care about what the price is today. I don't care about what the price is tomorrow. I don't even look at it. I care about mass adoption of the asset, of the protocol. That is what I'm waiting for. All of this other stuff is noise right now. All of these people complaining in the comments what the price of XRP is, I don't care. I'm waiting for mass adoption and this is what I think is going to be used by all of these banks. Bank of America, PNC Bank, Siam Commercial Bank, right? We talked about Santander. Standard Charter has like 7 million customers. CLACs in Mexico, right? Globally, you have US banks, Mexico banks, South American banks, right? Banks in Brazil, Africa. There's like 30 or 40 countries in Africa they can use XRP. Europe. Australia, Japan, right? We didn't even talk about Japanese banks. I have a few other things I wanna show you here. Uh, so a company provides unmatched, so how many bank accounts does Bank of America have? Check this out, 69 million customers. One bank, they have 69 million customers. It's insane. A few other things here, Standard Charter, right? We talked a little bit about Standard Charter. I, I, it's about 7 million customers they have. Uh, let me just pull this up. Yeah, 7.6 million customers, okay? And when you talk about Ripple partners with Wells Fargo, how many partnerships or banks? 70 million customers for Wells Fargo. These are just a few banks. Ripple has hundreds of banking connections. Hundreds, right? Institutions, central bank digital currency, digitizing bank deposits is what we're really excited about. All of that value in a bank can be tokenized brought onto the ledger, right? You might have Wells Fargo stablecoin. All these banks are gonna have their own stablecoin, okay? This is where we're heading. Visa will have their own stablecoin. And their stablecoin, hopefully, is built on top of the XRP ledger on a private ledger. And the value there lives on the XRP ledger. And that is where a true price discovery could come from. And that is why I'm so bullish on all of this stuff. Check this out, this is what I wanted to show you. So this is the largest banks in the US, okay? And this is how much money those banks have in assets, okay? This could be real estate, this could be you know bonds, this could be all kinds of things. But if this, if this value is tokenized and lives on the ledger so that value can move instantaneously, that is, that is Eureka, right? That's the light bulb moment. That's what we're trying to do here. Bank of America has $2.45 trillion in assets. Wells Fargo, 1.7. So this is $4 trillion right here. Imagine $4 trillion being added to the XRP ledger. What would that do to the price, right? That would skyrocket the price. That would 100X the price from where it is right now, okay? And this is like Citibank, 1.68 trillion, okay? And, and PNC Bank, 554 billion. Some of these banks are Ripple partners, and this is what is exciting about this whole asset space. As the world moves to blockchain, Ripple is the pioneer and leading the way in all of this. Tokenization, CBDCs, right? Instant payment, cross-border payments, FX transactions. The FX market is 7.5 to $8 trillion a day. Imagine once this value starts moving, where we will be price-wise, and that is what I'm waiting for. I hope you learned something, guys. If you did, like and share the video. We're trying to grow the channel, and I can only do that with you. I really appreciate you. Aloha. See you.